How's it going everybody? I hope you had a great Christmas. Happy Holidays. Um, I know we haven't been posting nearly as much as we normally did leading up to the holidays, but you know, as you, most of you know, we had our first little girl in October. Between that, Alex's recovery, the holidays, we've just really been focused on family and making sure we're taking care of ourselves. Um, that being said, it's almost New Year's. We're looking to really start ramping up Allison Fitness and our partnership with First Form. And we want to get back into making videos. I told you not too long ago that if we got a lot of uh, views and likes on our last video with me and Zach doing the Army physical fitness test, we would do another one, uh, maybe the combat fitness. We are going to work on that video shortly. It should be coming out in a few weeks. So make sure you're subscribed and checking and liking our videos to make sure you don't miss out on those. Today I just want to make a short quick video, tutorial type video. A couple of days ago I made a post on Instagram about me doing belt squats with a barbell and a squat rack and uh, had a lot of attention for it so I figured maybe I would just make a quick tutorial video on how to set it up and how to get the most out of your belt squat if you don't have a setup for belt squat. So. Let me know if you like this type of video. Comment below if you tried it out and you like it or if you have any suggestions yourself. Um, just let me know what you think. Okay, to start off with, all you need is a barbell and a squat rack. Now you wanna use the catch bars and not the J-hooks. The J-hooks right here will cause too much bumping between the plates and the rack. So what you want is something that's going to give you that little bit of gap right there. All right, you want to set it as far to the end as possible. Now, I suggest you go ahead and load some extra plates on whichever side is going to be stationary. Whichever side you're going to hook to, you want to slide that bar as far to that end as possible. this end just to counterbalance so the bar doesn't flip up off of the bar off the rack. Make sure you put a collar on it just in case something happens. You don't want those weights sliding off and then I'll flip it over on you. Now on this end I'm going to place the weight that I will be doing for the squat. So just to start off I'm going to put one plate on. Now if you have the option to use two collars on this end, I highly suggest it. Placing two collars on this end that you're going to be hooking the chain to will allow you to put that chain between these and reduce the chance of the chain sliding off. Now, doing the belt squat here versus on the landmine, the weight is going to be shifting towards you. Whereas on a landmine, it's going to be shifting away from you. So having that chain hooked to the end you're on, you're not going to have the chance of it slipping off as easily as you would with the landmine. And I'll show you both examples here in a minute. What I'm using is a Harbinger belt squat with a chain. Um, you can pick these up at most of your sporting goods store. For the most part, I think they're between $30 and $40. This one right here, I've tested personally with several hundred pounds and had no issues. What you're gonna to wanna to do is run the chain through both loops. Get it tight to your hips. Run it back through the starting point. And depending on your height, you can adjust this chain to be shorter, so you deeper range of motion, or longer, so you just so the bar is not pressing against you too much. Now I normally flip back through a few links. When you come over, all you have to do is hook it under, lift up, make sure the chain is giving you plenty of gap, space between your thighs, and then you just shift over slightly just to get off the catch bar and that's going to allow the weight to counterbalance. Make sure you're keeping your feet forward 
And as I said earlier, this versus a landmine, when you squat down, the weight shifts towards you, giving you more work, weight to work with. Whereas if you were using a landmine, you would go to the bar with level, and then you're lifting up only a portion of the weight. This also protects from sliding of the chain. Right now, the only point the chain's gonna slide is forward. It's highly unlikely to slide backwards. But just to be safe, we had a second collar. Show you from my point of view. So here, place the chain between the two collars. Lift off the catch bar and just slightly come to the side. And as you can see here, the reason why I wanted you to leave that gap there is because when we go down, the weights tilt towards you, which if it was too close to the back bar, it would hit the bar and mess with the balance. Here you have plenty of room. The only limitations you have with this setup is how much weight you can add to the bar. Now, if you can get bigger plates, you can definitely get more weight on here, but eventually you're going to run out of space on the bar. And just to show you that you don't really have to worry about the sliding of the chain, the second collar is just precautionary. I've got three plates on here. chain didn't slide at all. Now, as you get closer to the edge with the more weight that you add, you do want to have something there just as a precaution. So, that was kind of boring, um, but just real fast, I want to recap the main reasons why I, I use the belt squat on the squat rack versus on the landmine. Number one, and the most important, is safety. As you saw when I was doing it earlier, when you have it on the ground, your lowest point is still slightly on an incline. Now, because this end of the bar is going to be on the landmine, which is lower than where it is in the plate. Unless you have a small plate that you're using, you're barely going to get to parallel, if anything. And as you go up, you're going from slightly above parallel to even more. And as that happens, that chain's going to try to slide off the end. You're going to need some kind of clip on the end to hold that chain in place. If not, it's gonna slide off, the weight's gonna fall, you can drop it on your feet, injure yourself. Now, on the squat rack, the back end is already jacked up higher. So when you start at parallel, and you lift it off of the rack and come to the side, you're gonna have just a slight incline at the very top, whereas you only have a slight incline at the very bottom on the landmine. And then as you go down, all that weight shifts towards you, the chain tries to slide forward on the rack, on that bar. And as it slides forward on the bar, it actually becomes more secure. Now, when you come back up, you do have a slight incline, depending on what depth you put the chain on the adjustment. And if that's the case, then you still need to have a second clip, but it's much safer as that bar is not going to be in a steep incline. Now, the second thing, the second most important reason why I choose to do it on the squat rack versus on the landmine is again the angle. When you go at the starting position you're going to be much higher. You're going to come down to slightly above parallel again because this end of the landmine is going to be in the ground or in the landmine. As you're coming up with the weight doing the work all that weight is kind of shifting back onto the bar. Whereas here at the very upright position, you're just at a slight incline. As you go down, that weight actually shifts towards you, getting heavier and heavier. You can't get that depth on the weight on the landmine. The third and last reason why I choose to do the squat rack or the belt squat on the squat rack versus on the landmine is the starting position. On the landmine, unless you have something to set the bar on to start with, you're starting at the very bottom and you're having to get the chain on there in your squatted position, lift up off the ground, get set, and then go. Whereas on the squat rack, you can adjust the catch bars to a much more comfortable level. That way when you start off, you're already in a 
nearly upright position, place the chain around the bar, stand up with it, shift just slightly off the catch bar, and then you can go into your full squat. You don't have to start that very bottom, putting a lot of strain on the knees and hips. So again, I'm not sure um, if you enjoy this type of video. Our channel has a lot of different content. We have tutorials, we have fitness classes, we have challenges between me and friends. My wife teaches different fitness classes on here. Now, again, I don't know what you are looking for when you come to our channel, but I want to try to bring more content that you enjoy. If you did enjoy this, please like it, please comment below. If you have questions about this type of particular lift or other lifts or variations of lifts that you may be interested in, feel free to comment those below and I may make a video about that. Again, we're looking to uh, ramp up our video production starting in the new year and I know some of you subscribed because of our last video with me and Zach doing the Army Fitness Challenge. We, again, we are gonna to try to get the next video filmed and uploaded as soon as possible. So if you're here for that, don't, don't leave us yet. We are working on some more of those videos. If you're here for this type of videos, let us know. Hope you all have a great day.